zero to 100 back to zero, zero. in like 12 seconds. Yeah. So yeah. I said that to Shelby, and I'll, and this was the funniest thing. And he goes, that was just Miles screwing around on the airport deal. Really? I don't know what the number is. <laughs> it's just Miles telling me that was the number. So And he did it with a stopwatch <laughs> while he's driving. So I was like... Well, I think it was thirteen and, four. I think that's and, what it yes, was. Yes, and that's like that's now set in lore. Yes, right. It's it actually is. set in stone. But Shelby said it was just miles screwing around on the airport really? using a stopwatch. I was like, Wow. Good. Good to hear that, you know, that, that <laughs> legendary stop precision that, that yeah, precision pre deal. Precision you know. timing. And he's eating a taco, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stopwatch, shifting, that's right. drying. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Dropping Amazing. my groceries and yeah. getting punched by Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to Car Guy Confessions, brought to you by ARP. I'm Jeff Smith. This is my car buddy, Cam Benzie, and car builder, Steve Strope. And we're going to tell you the story. Welcome to another episode of Car Guy Confessions with Jeff Smith. Steve Strope. My buddy, Steve Strope. And what was your name again? Uh, Cam Benzie. <laughs> ARP. <laughs> So we're at we're at the Grand National Roaster we Show, are. and yes. as you can see, tacos. We're, we're working through lunch. So yes. <laughs> yes, actually, it's here. almost dark outside. It's probably more like dinner now, yes, right? It's, it's How long have we sense. been here? It is in Iowa. It, it definitely is in Iowa. <laughs> definitely is in Iowa. So we're having a great time. We've already had a bunch of guests, yes. and yes. and you know, so we thought, well, let's get you know the three amigos back together again for a little bit, just to have some fun. Let's keep the band and and we're going to offend you by eating in front of you. Yes. So uh, nah, which nah, which nah. you know I just okay. Yes. <laughs> I already said I'm staying That's away it. from the taco sauce I because I've been warned not to do that. So is that bad? Uh, so, well, is it very I'm, hot? I'm, Free world, probably. I don't know. I don't. I don't either. I'm, try I'm not going to try it on the on <laughs> air. That's for sure. I've got some on this one. So. So what are we talking you know, about? Today? How about the adventure I had this morning when I left the, my wallet at your house? No. And oh my God, you know. So it took forever just to get here because I got all the way here and then had to turn around and go back because I I'm left about my an hour wallet. and a half away from you. Oh boy, yeah. So, so we had a full day. And so if your neighbors tell you some guy rolls in in a four by Toyota pickup, because sure. Evan, thank you, Evan Perkins, loaned me his his dad his father in law's truck so I can drive out here <laughs> and go get. Does he know and uh, share yeah. this exciting <laughs> yes, story he does with know. you? <laughs> so it's been a it's been an eventful day already yeah it, it, it's, are, are we in our, a vibration I think somebody, lab somebody are fired we? up a motor outside i think is what's going on because there's cars there's shows the show's going on around us literally going around around us so ah. so if if it sounds like this is some kind of vibration test it probably is i, thought this was yeah. an EV I like show. it <laughs> <laughs> and we're out that's right. okay that's right <laughs> That's right. Get the hydrogen cars Again, out there. This is free. That's what you get. That's right. Yeah. So, so I, I we, like this. So we've had a good time. So I, I what I've been doing. So I've been out here for a week, looking for right? Your looking, yes, looking for my wallet, and and had a great time interviewing. I'm do. I'm working on a story. So we'll just kind of cross promote here a little bit. How's that? So doing a story for Hot Rod Magazine on uh, what my working title is: the Godfathers of the of the automatic performance automotive tr transmission automatic. And and so I've talked. And who to, would they be? That would be John Kilgore, and not in any particular order. John Kilgore. Wow. <laughs> John Kilgore, <laughs> Art Carr, um, Bob Spar from B and M, mm -hmm. and Marv Ripes. I had yet to talk to, so I need to talk to Marv. But um, this has been really special. Been really fun. These guys' average age is like eighty eight. Um, Art Carr works every day. He's 90 years old, you know, and you know, these guys are sharp as a tack. I mean, it was fun talking to these guys. And it's all about the beginnings of the high-performance automatic transmission, which started with the GM Hydromatic. And what B&M did, if you've ever seen the, their old logo, it was called the Mechanical Man. And it was a mechanical oh, yeah, shifter right. because mm -hmm. that sure. transmission was, was purely automatic. Oh, it's just been a lot of fun. So uh, yeah. the hard part now is condensing all of this history down into – one story, but uh, uh, John Gil John Kilgore is probably the only one you may not know that much about. But he's he's done a bunch of stuff in the Turbo 400, you know. So that's where it all, all started with. So, so a lot these of fun. would be the guys in the day, well, oh, early sixties, yeah, late fifties, early sixties, yes, late fifties, early sixties, creating the, 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 the transmissions transmission. that would live behind yep. the drag race. Right. Yep, yep, 
and and, 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 and like, like you know that. when K.S. Pittman decided to use a hydro instead of a LaSalle four three speed transmission, which I have in my little Model A pickup. Yeah, yeah. Those. yeah, and and, and he said he went which like we'll a second quicker with the hydro, wow. and I said, why do you think that was? He says, well, the LaSalles were spindly; they were they were fragile, and so he said you couldn't just bang the gears in those transmissions. So you know, this is a this is a ga- a gasser. Right, they, that was before the superchargers, but um, so they'd have to, you know, wide open throttle and then completely lift, put the clutch in, very gently shift it, let the clutch out, and then get back on the throttle. And all that delay of power sure. as a hydro, you could just drive right through it. Right. And uh, so, yeah, amazing stuff. So, amazing. yeah, speaking, yeah. Speaking of that, I speaking heard of that, I I, I I should bring up his name. I saw something that David Freiberger was talking about. Yes, that I had yet to have ever heard, but the term. Drag racing. Do you know what it came from? Oh, the, the actual term itself. The actual term. No, I don't. And that was what I, I, That's what I it was listen, about? I listened to him How and it was like, simple is what that, is that? Right? What is drag racing? Uh-huh. And I was like, well, what is, uh, and the two things that he brought up that made the most sense to me are, one is the racing happened on the main drag on in the, the city. Drag so the main town, drag right? in the city. Right? Or you were beating the guy next to you so much that you were... Dragging, dragging him, him along. along. That's it. Wow. But okay. it's funny. It's like, how stupid is that? I mean, we've always talked about, you know, drag racing yeah. versus and street racing well be, and all the other stuff. It could very well be something like that. Yeah. But you had never heard anything like that? No, no. There's, there's, it was funny. Uh, I forget was like, the guy's name, but there's a there's a very well So you two, uh, I don't. I figured you two scholars nope. knew the origins of the term. Mind your tongue. Drag no. racing. <laughs> no. Hmm. How Isn't that, that funny? That how crazy? simple is that? Yeah. Should go back to street racing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But street racing is not drag racing. No, it is huh? not. It is not. No, no. Is not. Mm. No, very different. So we'd like to thank our sponsor, ARP and ARP-Bolts.com. And, uh, I mean, we all three build cars. We all work yeah. on this stuff. And I, I mean, tinker. You tinker. I we, tinker. Yes, we all build. Yeah, and, and you know what? It's, it's kind of a, a really cool multiple-purpose fastener for me because there's all the science and all the technology which is bottomless trust me unbelievable amount of research that they put into these sure, things absolutely and on top of it you get them out of the the package and they're absolutely beautiful which i've joked before it's like jewelry for your right. car and when pre we're building it yeah. when we're yeah and when we're building a high-end car it there isn't anything else going on it i need it's part of the criteria for right. me to have them lining the engine bay, not just on the engine, everywhere. Yeah. Right. So right. you get all the strength, the durability, the reliability, and fantastic good looks. Right. Sure. Kind of like Jeff here. And without, yeah. and without peer. <laughs> without peer. With, and you know what? Or pairs. With, with, without peer. There's, no, there's nobody else Correct. that does that what is, they do. It is. So check them out at arp-bolts.com, and they can help you out. Get a turnkey manual transmission conversion from American Powertrain for your muscle car, classic truck, or custom. American Powertrain offers a complete line of parts and accessories handling everything you need from the back of the block to the differential. One of the largest distributors of Tremec transmissions, American Powertrain has the parts you need to install a TKX 5-speed, Magnum T56 6-speed, or anything else you can dream up. They offer custom hydraulic clutches, cross members, bell housings, clutches, shifters, crate engines, and more. And remember, save the stick. Check out American Powertrain at AmericanPowertrain.com or call their sales line at 931-646-4836. And I've got a tidbit of news. Did you see that in Formula One that Ford is coming back? No. Yes, 2026. Wow. They're making motors, 2026. They, they're not building an EV no, car. it's going not, to be no, no. evil, this is horrible the, gasoline. And this, this is the funny part. It's like we know Ford has had its struggles, shall we say? I mean, they weren't at SEMA because it didn't make sense with a company well, that's Well, GM struggling. wasn't either. Chevrolet wasn't there. Same None reason. They're selling cars because they don't have any chips. Mm. Same same, so, same reasoning. Lack here. of profit, no yeah. money to spend on the so car show. how do you do that? Oh. I mean, the Ford's here. Ford's here at the Grand National. Yeah. They're over here, so that's kind of a nice little deal. But it was interesting. I was reading that deal, but there is a change in the motor uh, protocols in 2026. So Ford is coming back with its own motor. It's a big announcement. Wow. So they're gonna, And they're going to be in the Red Bull cars. So Really? Yes, really? So, yeah. Which is a highly competitive car, as we know, yes, from this year. Wow. Well, we'll watch that tail spin down into a... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Epic losing program. <laughs> I just, I just, you know, was hanging out at your house, you know, because you were, you were putting me up, nice to put me up. That's and uh, I just read uh, the book that you had on on uh, Ken Miles. Yes, and extremely just a fantastic cool book. cool book. Super cool what, book. What was the guy's name? Um, Ken Miles. No, no, no. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> the guy that wrote the book. Do you Jim remember? Marietta from yeah. the original Venice crew was very yeah, nice. Yeah, very okay. cool. Yeah, because okay. yeah, he was the original photographer at the team, so he had all this great photography of the, of, of of Ken Miles coming Stuff up through the whole y'all thing. Y'all ain't seen yet. Yeah, and great and book. and and how his comments about and interviewing guys that were at. Lamar in 66 when Ken Miles kind of got sure. snookered. Yes. He got, he got to say it nicely. Screwed. Yes. And how the movie <sighs> really didn't portray it properly. Yes. And do. that BB really got a kind of a, a bad image out of that movie as well. And, well. and at least in the book, they said he was a genuinely nice guy, really liked Ken Miles. But they right. decided to paint that, you know, and that's, right. and that's, that's artistic Hollywood. license. And, and, that's and right. the whole you know. deal with the fight and the whole that deal. They, from the people that I know that have been around that whole deal, they never would have fought. There's no way right, that Shelby right. and, uh, and Miles yeah. would have had a fist yeah. fight. So that was that was kind of interesting. But uh, I, I could I could be see believable where Ken Miles would throw a wrench at yes. <laughs> you yes. know, in the pits. I can yes. see that happening. You bet. You so will. didn't you say that you went to? They built that facade. The, the, the I did. It was out in. It was the uh, Rialto uh, Airport, wasn't it? it? No, it was uh, Agua Dulce. Agua Dulce. And they only, but they only built one half. So that's a series of the whole CGI thing. Okay. Only one half of that that uh, facility was there, but it was unbelievably vast. I mean, it was just this huge deal, and it was strong enough that it was three levels, mm-hmm. and they had extras all over it. All so over. it wasn't like you know you know a plastic cardboard thing. Right, it was right. literally you stand up there and wave. Wow. What was this? What that was the at. at Le Mans, mm-hmm. the pits at Le Mans. The front street. Oh, oh, yeah. Where they were oh, building yeah. that whole they, they built, built the facade. They built the yeah, whole facade. I have pictures of that. We'll throw those yeah. up. We'll throw those up for you to see them. But it was, uh, it's pretty because amazing. Because remember, I asked you, because my yeah. buddy Tim Moore, yeah. who we, we has now passed away, but he yeah. built a replica GT40. And yeah. I went, when you told me about that, I said, there you go. could we get that car out there to take some <laughs> pictures? You said, no, they, they didn't want that to happen because right. they didn't want those photos to get out. Before Early. the movie came out, which but, is understandable. But then I went to France and showed it to the people at the museum. Really? I did. Yeah? Before the movie came out. And and what did they say? That blew their minds. Really? It was like, what's going on here? Because it looked you know, really they, good. It was in French, so you can't quite get the same deal. <laughs> it wasn't quite so as exciting. how do they exciting. say, what? In French. How do they do <laughs> that? They say, oui. Mais oui? They say, so, but. Uh, <laughs> Swear to God. <laughs> It's off the rails, man. Have, have a taco. Have a taco. Here, have a taco. We gave you tacos, and I don't know what the hell happened That's to it. my I'm life. I'm afraid to eat I yes. want to eat it, but I'm, yeah. I, I know it's going to happen. I'm going to end up it's, wearing it. So oh, I'm not really sure I want to do that. There you go. Eat it. Get it over with. Yeah. All among friends, right? Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. I guess there was a gathering recently of all the old Of tacos? Uh, no, of tacos. <laughs> they were. They're right there. A gathering of all the old Shelby engineers. So oh, they had actually oh, pulled oh. it together. I can't, yeah. I, I, I've got to get the detail on that, but they actually did have the yeah. last living members of that whole really? deal. Really? So, yeah. So they're all, and, they all and, got together. You know, what, what does sort of come through in the movie is how good a driver he really was. Yeah. Ken? Ken Miles, oh, yeah. 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 And that, in that your book, it's like, yeah, we, we go to this road race, USRRC race, and Ken Miles starts fifth and wins, finishes, wins and, right. and, 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 you know, parts are falling off the car. He crashes it. You know, he's, he's dead no, last and the, comes through the field and wins. And it's yeah. like the, the best thing, which, which had been said before, but I, I've got a Mustang project that hopefully is going to be um, starting up in maybe six months or so. And it, um, I have some, uh, some cool parts. That uh, I have obtained, really, through Mr. From, Jim Marietta. Yeah, all right. But anyway, you got a cross boss? Uh, no, I do not have a cross. I would love Ooh. to see one. Of, I don't think I've ever but seen I, one I of those got, in person. I've never seen one. I got live. stuff cool no. enough. Don't worry. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> I have other cool stuff. Quiet, you. <laughs> there, there was. Uh, he was. I had heard the stories before, but when they came out with the Cobra, and they were just gut punch in the Corvettes mm-hmm. that they were just coming in and just checking the fan belts because they had nothing better Did to do. do. Right. Because they're like laps and laps in front of them. And it's like, oh, no, check the thing. It, it, give me some tea. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to try and make it interesting. Yeah, well, he and he's such a commanding driver. Like, mm-hmm. Clearly the car was, you know, doing its job, but yeah. he was he was just running away with everybody. 
Yeah. And he was, he is such a, he is probably the, and I was very happy about that. Even with all the Hollywood that can make things go sideways and mm-hmm. storytelling, they did show, I thought they, they did a pretty good job of making sure everyone knew Ken was a pretty badass driver yeah. and was yeah. celebrated as, and should be celebrated as mm-hmm. such. But he, um, uh, what were they telling me about him? He he was very, very funny, and he was not, I guess he wasn't horrifically egotistical about it, And he, but he just wanted to go out and win and race. And uh-huh. they're, like, calling him in into the pits, and he's like, what? I don't got a problem. They're like, we got to check the... <laughs> Turn it off. We gotta check the fan belt. He's like, "Are you are you kidding?" Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm killing him. Yeah, I'm killing him. He's like, it, ah, don't worry "In the about book, it. they it was I, where the wet race was. I want to say Watkins Glen, but it may not have been. But after the race was over, the the, the Shelby team went out and built a headstone, essentially what looked like a headstone in the in the dirt, and then it said, "Here lie the Corvettes." Oh, because they just buried them. <laughs> and they, they weren't very happy about that. And they did. They really did. Well, he was, it was you amazing. know, what for me, from everything that I could read and then talking to, to people like, like Jim, um, I think he was cut from the same cloth as, and, and I say this with respect, and I mean it as the compliment that it's meant, as Senna. He's a very naturally gifted driver who understood the car, un, unweighing and, and weighing and digging, and he could feel every limit of traction and exploit it constantly. But what made him so valuable, besides the the obvious racing skill, is he was, as the test driver, feeding back when they're prototyping the right. stuff, going, the GT40. that's not working. <clears throat> oh, yes. even the Daytona Coupe. And, the Daytona, uh, and yes, even yes. The, 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 the Cobra itself, you know, breaking crap when they're trying to get it to go right. faster. And right. this isn't working. This is working. This is uh, telling um, Phil, I'm sure. Remington, this yeah. is what it's doing, mm-hmm. and he was obviously able to communicate right. what he felt so accurately. Which is which is not fi- easy to do when you're right. when you got 100 percent concentration to try to keep from you don't kill yourself, right? And then come back and tell them what's going on, you know. Right. Well, that's so a good driver. That's that, a good driver. that communication with with Phil as the he's lead engineer for for mm-hmm. all intents and purposes, right. as far as I know, was obviously pinnacle to all of those vehicles' success out on the track when other people were driving them and racing them. They created such a, such a uh, well engineered car in such a fast amount of time, <coughs> especially was, with the, with the coupe yes. 90 days. Yes. Fast. You yeah. know, yeah. Shelby gave him a wrecked, gave um, Brock a wrecked Cobra and said, mm, mm, there you go. Yeah. And there yeah. was photographs in the book of him sitting in the car and, and the saying, piece of wood. Yeah. The piece yes. of wood over yep. the top. This is, this is how much, how tall it yeah. can be. Fascinating. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh right. man. Well, what a great was, team. I did a story with um, with Shelby for Rob, Rob Canan. He was okay. a hot rod. He said, find some good classic photos and then have Shelby give you captions for them. Mm-hmm. And there were a lot of really interesting things that he said. One of the things was he actually kicked Brock in the knees and said that the car should have, the, the, the coupe should look more like the 917 than it than the car that it does, the coupe yeah. that it looks mm-hmm. like to now, which a lot of people gave me a lot of flack on, but it's like, that's what, what he, he said. said, man. So I'm, not, I'm just telling you what he said. And, and uh, but the thing that was that was funniest to me about that whole deal was I remember talking to him because it, it was the 289s that were the fast cars. The the 427s did not. Yeah, 427s didn't have the record. They didn't handle right, those. because so, there was so much weight on the front end. Right. Yeah. So so it was the 289s that set all the records and really were the big race winners. But I remember saying to him, I, uh, I was saying, I remember you guys having that that. Uh, deal where it was uh, zero to 100 back to zero, zero. in like 12 seconds yeah so yeah. i said that to shelby and i'll and this was the funniest thing and he goes that was just miles screwing around on the airport deal really i don't know what the number is <laughs> it's just miles telling me that was the number so and he did it with a stopwatch <laughs> while he's driving so i was like well, I think it was thirteen and, four. I think and, that's what it yes, was. Yes, and that's like that's now set in lore. Yes, right. It's it actually is. set in stone. But Shelby said it was just miles screwing around on the airport really? using a stopwatch. I was like, Wow. Good. Good to hear that. You know, that, that <laughs> legendary stop precision. That, that yeah, precision pre- deal. Precision yeah. timing. He's eating a taco. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Yeah, yeah stopwatch that's shifting, right. drying. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Dropping Amazing. my groceries yep. and getting punched by Shelby. <laughs> 
Hey, we'd like to thank our sponsor, ARP-Bolts.com. we got a fantastic little backdrop here. They make it an outstanding series of bolts, almost anything you would need for engines, chassis, things like that. In fact, we were at lunch today, and a guy asked you about the the, the bolt on the back of your shirt, and it was, and, it was really, and I said, well, it's really about a head bolt. They neck the, 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 the stem down of the bolt on a short a small block Chevy head bolt, so the clamp load is even across three different head bolt lengths on a small block Chevy. And, uh, you know, so that, that's the kind of technology that you get out of sure. ARP. And uh, we, we've all got stories on all that right. stuff. Uh, but, for a uh, translation of what he said, call ARPbolts.com. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the message is that you can't get any better than that. No, you so cannot. There yep. you go. Nope. Excellent. And then just check him out at ARP-bolts.com. We'd like to thank our friends at InTheGarageMedia.com. They have three fantastic magazines. They've got Classic Truck Performance. They have Modern Rotting and my favorite, All Chevy Performance, with Nick, my buddy Nick, oh, the so editor. Biased. So Correct. yes, of course. Yes. But uh, they're doing print media, which yes. is, uh, of course, our favorite. So uh, in color magazine. and everything. In color and everything, yes. and and you can get your your car on the cover of one of those books, right. which is right. a fun no, that's deal. A lot. Great yeah. tech. You can Great tech. By you know, and not always written by me, but yeah. People. Yeah. Not yeah. always written by me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Just so pick it up and read it. it. at yes. InTheGarageMedia.com, and uh, they're our friends, and uh, they will thank you. Oh, man. Yeah, just bring but it that on. was a great book, though. So, I mean, you know, it's oh, worth yeah. it. Worth, if, you're, if you're interested in all that stuff, yeah, because I there's think a lot of inside. I think yeah. he's released them. So, so you should be able to find them online. Original Venice Crew. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and just a bunch and it's a of photography. New book on yeah. um, Ken Miles. Ken Miles, and yep. it's really, really cool. Nice. Very in depth and on Miles. You got something special with yours. Yeah, yeah. It's a, a really hair. cool aluminum. <laughs> well, it's, a, a, it's an a, aluminum, a, like an aluminum oh, okay. cradle okay. for the that, book. That okay. the book goes in. Yeah. That oh, he wow. really built, like, that's cool. I don't know ten of them, something like that. I don't think. So you're special. Yeah, oh, I'm special. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Jim so, Dandy. And in, <clears throat> so in other news, yes. Now going forward to today, we just heard that GM is going to uh, do a Gen Six small block. Yes. So, and there was a picture of the of them unveiling like the front and half of the, the front leading edge and the trailing edge of the block, mm-hmm. and Wait, it was like, let me get this right, because yeah. I'm I live in a obviously in a cornfield, so <laughs> in an alternative universe. Yeah. So. You're in Iowa Four. too. <laughs> <laughs> and touche, sir. Yes, yes. <laughs> You're in Iowa too. Yes, my hometown is 90 people. <laughs> and you know them all. And I, no, I actually don't. I don't. Hermit. But I'm I'm known as the weirdo, crazy, the crazy guy from California. Yeah. Oh, did you, tell about, did you tell him about my John Deere tractor I saw at CES? Uh, no. Yeah. No, I didn't. Oh, Get no, this. No, 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 I didn't. No, no. Uh, uh, John Deere tractor. This John Deere tractor. Well, it's a combine. It's, you sent me those images. Con- con- consumer electron. I went to the consumer electronics. Yeah, show. I'll right, fill you in with yeah, some yeah, of that you stuff. Uh, and like the they BMW. Did. Yes, they did. They did a full tractor in their booth that had the arms. You know the big arms that go out through the field. Uh-huh. And the arms have cameras in them, and the cameras go along. And, and decapitate the rabbits. It's a, <laughs> pretty close. What it does, what it does is when it spots a a plant that is not wanted, like a weed, mm. yes, it sprays pesticide on it. So you can be driving along, <laughs> it says takes eliminate. a picture, <laughs> takes a picture, Ice. kills. It's a killing machine. So Ice. anyway, you know what? Twelve and I, twelve I got, miles an hour. Even even with current twelve miles current, an hour. Yeah. Current t- well, that's pretty fast. Though. Slamming yeah. tractor. That's, that's right. You're killing weeds. Iowa tractor people yeah. right. know these yeah. things. From it. What were we talking about? We were talking about Gen 6. Gen 6 motors. Well, what, what, I, what, I, what I was buff- yes. baffled about. <laughs> yes, he was. Since, since I thought, you know, our big three have already said, that's it. It's yes, no more, now. no right. more we're into, IC. We're into no. strip mining now. Right, right. <laughs> and we want to ravage the planet mm-hmm. and, um, you know. And turn electric, that. yet we're still going to build yet, a gas, a new no, gasoline no, engine. No, no, not just that. We're going to go racing where we're just using fossil fuels for right. no good reason. Right. Right. Not ambulances. GM's Nothing important. GM's investing $1 billion. In, a bi- in the plants. Yes, oh. in, in like... Is that a dirty four, secret? Four different plants. Four different plants. Oh, well, of course. Let alone uh, Ben's, I think Porsche well, too, but Ben's is sinking a lot of money in the synthetic fuel. Yes, yeah. yes, um, yes. Hydrogen too. 
Mm-hmm. Hydrogen electric is getting hot too. So you know, there, there's still let alone for the Honda. Ice. Honda's went engines. on record, and so did Porsche, going, "This is nonsense, not, and this not is not going to work." Mm-hmm. No, it's not going to work. Yeah, you can say everything well, you want, but it's not going it, to work. It's interesting. Uh, my my perspective is a little bit different. You know, I drive in Los Angeles, and I'm astounded with how, because I only come out here about three, four times a year, and I'm astonished with the number of, of Teslas I see on the road now. No. I mean, it seems like they're I'm everywhere. not, because you're in Southern California. Yeah, but I mean, it's still relative to where I come from. And then the, the converse of that is I drive down the highway to 18 miles to get to my lo- local gas station, and every third vehicle is a is big a vehicle, twenty five hundred series truck pulling a trailer that's right. probably carrying eighteen thousand right. pounds, and it's like electric trucks are not going to be able to do that. Imagine trying to tow an eighteen thousand pound trailer in the dead of winter when it's five above zero. You know, when your battery efficiency is down about thirty percent, you wouldn't you wouldn't get yeah. to town. You wouldn't get you wouldn't make it. You would not make it. So it's not really viable now if you want to run this internal combustion engine on some other alternative fuel or or it just yeah. gets so much so, so much more efficient that makes a lot more sense yeah. the hydrogen you know. side of it was discussed a lot at ces a lot of the cars had hydrogen electric that was mm-hmm. their new yeah their new thing of course hydrogen is not as easy to get you know, it's well there's also something about. called green hydrogen and yeah. i don't exactly know where that comes from but there's so there's Did hydrogen that you can generate like ethanol and methanol you know, possibly, corn. possibly, seemingly, yeah. yeah. So, but I'm I'm still up on building a 14 to one compression E85 motor and say, well, there, you know, there you go. Now let's let's totally re- renewable fuel. Sure. And Which makes and good I sense. think you know yeah. if I built a street motor at 14 to one compression ratio, I could get the kind of fuel mileage that that size engine could get on gasoline because of the of the additional compression. Right. So it's going to raise the efficiency, bring it up to a level that would be comparable sure. to a gasoline engine. So That'd be good. Yeah, just You're gonna do that. I think so yeah. because I've you know the, my my pals. I'm looking through the Mali catalog. You know after the MPMC conference, it's like, sure. well they've got a piston mm-hmm. here. I can run a six liter with fourteen to one compression. You know without having to build a custom piston. There you go. It's like nice. Yeah, we should do that. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'll put that on my list of Please things do to do. Yeah. Yeah. So what's this motor going to be used for? This new one. The what the Gen GM 6? one? The Gen Six. Yeah. What's it for? My, my it's guess is going to be said commercial, mostly but, commercial. But it's so going to be trucks. So it's just going to be a twenty five hundred. 2,500 and larger. Just a truck motor. Yeah. Do we well, know how, do we well, know how big look, it's going to be? Ford just did with, look yeah. what Ford just did with, the, with the, uh, that 7.3 liter motor. Yes. The, the, um, yes. What do they call it? Uh, Godzilla. The yes. Godzilla engine. They do. You know, push rod, <laughs> cam and block, push rod, two yes. valve motor. Yes. 7.3 liters. And, and the performance industry is going crazy over yes. this motor. True. It's yeah. become a new platform. You know, people Absolutely. are really into that yeah. whole deal. Yeah, yeah. Making, of making, course, we're one tenth of one percent of the marketplace, but still, sure. it's like it makes perfect sense because you can't do, you can't do an electric commercial vehicle at twenty five hundred series that's pulling a thirty thousand pound trailer. You're just not going to be able to do it. I got a kick out today coming here, racing to try and get here after you know coming back, and it was after the big, wallet debacle. After the yeah. wallet debacle, mm. and, and racing down the freeway. I'm I'm pulled alongside a, a gooseneck truck with three Teslas on the back being pulled by a diesel Ram truck. <laughs> and I thought it balances out. I, I it wish I could. If fight, no. <laughs> I thought that was really a kick. Yeah, don't let them no, on fire, like, please. That'll be no, bad. all on their own. I don't. Yeah, yeah, they don't, don't, yeah. Yeah. Try to light them don't on fire. need any that'll help with that. That's so. what I'm yeah, saying. They, they seem to like yeah. to do that. Yeah. Or, oh yeah. well. So so at uh, CES, um, I got to witness the first electric solar car it's gonna have solar panels it was it was funny they were showing it you know we, they market what about stuff. nighttime yeah well supposedly he stores it up but that's where the electricity it goes into the electric to the batteries and then it hangs around it so then, but it was funny because they they had this one that they were showing you that was their kind of their prototype that they're actually building in like Norway or someplace, so you can buy it. There's not a lot of sun. No, it's not a lot of sun. All right, I'm thinking this is a bad idea. I was wondering the logic idea. on this breakdown bad already. Bad idea. <laughs> that was, yeah, but but and it was funny because they had the the actual production car that's going to be available in 2025. That's this solar battery vehicle, and they put it behind like little pieces of wood about this far away. It was in jail. It was like it was like a, it's like <laughs> you get an eye in there and you stick your eye. In, but it was like. What was the point of this? You know, you get to see a little vignette of this car uh-huh. and, and no purpose. It's like clearly it makes exists. you want it more. Oh, gosh. By holding it away, right? Do you there remember the, a... the electric car race that they did down in, in, in Australia about, I don't know, 30 years ago? 
Mm-mm. Remember that? No. Because GM built a car. It was it was it was an experiment to right. see if you could run the electric vehicles, uh, and, and they did it in the outback because I lots of sun. You remember that? Because yeah. a GM car looked just like a cockroach. Yes. You know, because it had nothing but but solar cells solar on panels. it, but it worked. I and do the guy actually that. laid yes. down. Yes. The guy actually laid down because the, the frontal area was like this, right. you know, because they wanted to make and it was hard rubber tires and and all that crazy stuff. Perfect but, for the 7-Eleven. Yes, but I mean the point was these are development vehicles blah blah blah. Yeah. The fact that they did it and it and achieved the I I forget Is who that won. Like covered with kangaroo guts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, how do you put a rhubarb on the I front don't of an electric know. car? That would like, be, this is like, <laughs> scoop them up and slide them off. Because I need a deer bar. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, they're deer telling deer. me, I say, you need one of these because I live on Deer Run Road. And, you know, it's, they all Perfect. tell me, the locals all tell me, it's not an if, it's when. It's when, it's right. when yeah. So I, I live in abject terror of Perfect. driving any that of my cars. That sounds like back home in Perfect. Appalachian. Yeah, yeah. It's, right. it's a deer fest. Yeah. <laughs> and And... and <laughs> By the way, in our midst, we have another Appalachian boy. Yeah, who's yeah. laughing because he knows all about. He, he knows, knows where my that. he knows where my house yeah. is. And there are more than one. Plenty of- <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. and again, okay. okay, okay. And who is this that we're talking about? Uh, his name's Eric. He's over there. Okay, say hi, right. Eric. Hi, hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. Okay. There we go. <laughs> the other Appalachian William, survivor. William Mopar. Building yeah, he's building that bad some bitch more yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, gonna be really nice. Anyway. How fun is that? Well, better than so your kangaroo. Speaking, cut. speaking of <laughs> <laughs> speaking of cars, that does let's we talk do that about here. your Chevelle that's at the show we, here. Uh, the, the, uh, yeah. Oh, sure. Talk about your car. I have a Chevelle. Actually, yeah. I don't have a No, Chevelle. it's it's your customer's car. I have a customer who has yeah. a Chevelle. It's very nice. Sixty seven. Yeah. Beautiful. It's a very car. nice sixty seven Chevelle that we had yes. up at SEMA. Um, but as you know, it's a kind of a closed deal up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we brought it out here for people to enjoy and see, but, uh, uh, second owner car car was originally turquoise on turquoise, plain Jane Malibu in amazingly clean shape. And now it's turquoise on like a, a white and turquoise interior. I did mm-hmm. designed with Eric Brockmeyer, uh, Gabe's did the interior of course, uh, paint by Mick. Jenkins, so yeah. it's shiny and beautiful. Um, yep. Good, straightforward, very very relatable muscle car. Lots of people coming up to me. That's like my high school dream car. Yeah, right. So You said that. Yeah. I said that. <laughs> well, you have one. That was your high school. Anyway. 66. There you go. So 511-inch yeah. big block uh, with Weber's. Wow. Carbureted. Nice. It's a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. Five-speed, Detroit speed, suspension, wheelwood brakes, JRI coilovers. So, it, so, it, so it'll get out of its own way. Yeah, the, mm-hmm. the, and, of course, my the, favorite. TKX. My, yes. yes. Uh, no, it's not a new TKX. Well, it's, it's not? A, it's just a um, um, TKO. Oh, really? Yep. Really? Okay. Well, I started the cart, you know, like a year and a half ago. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. before they what, introduced it. What do you want from well, me? Right at. Right. Okay. okay. So, uh, but vintage air, Dynamat, kicker sound system in it. So get in, turn the key, plenty of power, uh, really nice go down the road car that uh, really, really pleased with it. It came out and, you know, polished ET uh, five spokes yep, on it. Yep. Good, 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 straightforward car. But you know what I, I got? It's it's funny when I bring out a car like that, and this one's a great example. A lot of people, especially friends within the industry are like, oh, I love this car. And I'm like, right. And I know it's around me at these shows, mm-hmm. you know, and there's, you know, just the double throw down, you know, engine cover twin turbos, which I've done cars at that level too. Sure. And I'm um, like, really? And they're like, no, that thing just, you know, in 20 years from now, it's still going to look well, good. There's and, nothing and to date. Because it. it's a nothing. real car too. Yeah, it is a real car. I mean, um, I don't know how the you colors def- are pretty. I don't know how you too. define that other than, no, well, it, I could jump in it and drive it to yeah, the grocery store if I wanted well, to. What it is. Whereas it, an amber car, you wouldn't dare do it that. It was re- at SEMA and here it's relatable. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's a much better term. And any any fan of this stuff, it, it's relatable. And the engine's special enough to give it that, well, oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you got a big block with Weber's, it, that's not very often. And I know no. why, because we had to fiddle with to the, sink those. Yeah, well, luckily I've got a absolute a genius that well, uh, every every car he owns has Weber's on it, so wow. he's fantastic. So but they're, they're we still had to ma- not, we had to we had to machine that guys. intake. Yeah. We had to take bunch off the pad. It's one of the Ingles wow. intakes. Okay, and to get the carbs to fit, wow. we had to shorten the bells, and wow. because I didn't want a cowl hood, I didn't yeah. want the bubble SS hood because mm-hmm. it's a Malibu. So mm-hmm. 
I wanted it to sit there like, oh yeah, that's a really pretty car. It's really nice. You crack yeah. the hood and you're like, oh, and you, and you, you know? and you didn't do what everybody does, which is put an SS hood on it. No, nope. make it an no SS, SS and, really and I did an SS tail panel. Nope, kept it plain, it, plain Jane Malibu and the aluminum trim down the down the lower side of the car that everybody gets rid of. Yep, I, I wanted it to be proud that it was just a Malibu yeah. and that it, it looks good like it is, and um, definitely visually. Walk softly and carried a big stick because mm-hmm. when you open the hood or when oh, you get yeah. up to the interior, it's a it's another little world, yeah. and that's yeah. what that's what kind of boosts it and, and made it special. And I've mm-hmm. again been very fortunate. Uh, a bunch of different yeah. uh, magazines. I think I got three magazines. I want to feature it now. Cool. So, um, and 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 it's for the same thing. It's very attractive. The colors work, but it's very relatable. The mm-hmm. guy, it's got enough special stuff going on to be cool. But it's related. The guy, sure. the initial first blush. Yes, because they're cool going to they're going to read the story and say, right. "I could build a car like that." Right, it's not right. tubbed. It's got two seventy fives on it. Mm-hmm. You know, seventeens and eighteens. Nothing ludicrous. So yeah. every everything somebody could, you know, like when I was reading when when you guys were putting the magazines and I'm reading, there's there's the awesome stuff that's tubbed and cut and dropped and blown and everything else, and then there's the other cars that were. Also sat cool, and I'm like, oh, I could, I can do that and that and that at home. I can make it sit like that. I can do that. And so the relatable stuff lets you right. play right. with your stuff right. at home and, and start and, fiddling. And, and speaking of relatable cars, like like I walked right. over to the building you real the, quick. You mean the T70? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very relatable. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's, that oh. caught my eye. I just wanted to... <laughs> Was Scott Scott Sullivan's got his '61 here? Yeah, not his built car. Built for a customer. Uh, built for a customer, and uh, I got a chance to see it for like five yeah. minutes. It's um, always just amazing a spectacular colors, car. Almost uh, always super so tasteful. So 409, 409, nice. four, I think it's, yeah, four speed. Mm-hmm. And um, and because he was calling me ahead of time, going, you know, we got a flat tap of camshaft in this thing. How do we break it in? And so I was helping some doing some stuff. I said, I'm going to tell you a bunch of stuff. You're going to hate me because I'm telling you to take the inner springs out. You know, and right. yeah. soft. It up, mm-hmm. and then and so it was fun to see the car in live per, in, in person, you know. And it's yeah. just and his spe- usage of colors, oh, yeah, and how oh, he yeah. alters little things in the dash, and just yep, you know, yep. bottomless, tasteful, and like things. you know, the, the he he pulled the, the rear license plate in and put a panel, yeah, around, put, put a panel around, around, around it, yeah. yeah. And because uh, somebody was asking me, it's like, is that's is that stock? No, no, no that's no. not stock, no. no. And he probably fit the bumper to the body and all For those sure. things that yeah. that you don't. It's, if you don't pick out, Scott is the king of two percent. Yeah, yeah, two percent, two percent, two percent. And I remember an interview, and I, I thought it was with you in a hot rod or a quote, but he said something along the lines of, "I go out of my way to spend a thousand hours to do something you're never going to notice, yep. you're yep. never going to see." Yep. And and I agree with that because if if you can't if it looks like it belongs there, then as a designer or engineer or or fabricator, you did your job right because mm-hmm. it mends into the to the scenery properly yep. instead of yep. you know neon pink wing. Uh, clearly, that didn't come with it. You know? Right, <laughs> right, exactly. Well, you do, yeah, this is we definitely see cars, your style. I mean, yeah. this is definitely your kind of style. Oh, That's and, exactly. You know, what you and do and with I, your I've cars. said mm-hmm. in a million interviews yeah. and stuff that I am, uh, I was really really inspired by scott sullivan when i was younger and he had his uh the first nova the tub car the, the 66 car right yeah. and and then of course cheese whiz and then and then i remember I, I i i swear i was in canfield and i'm on the one end of the field and if you remember in canfield everybody went through registration and came across the back of that um, the bleachers for right, the horse yeah. track, right? And you came in right there. And you came in through here, and then you went to wherever in the field you're going to sit. Uh-huh. I'm I'm way over here. You can see the you can see the the grandstand, the back of it over here. Uh-huh. And I see this black '57 slinking oh, around the yeah. corner. And it's just it's just all sorts of. I don't care if it's where it's all sorts of fucking badass. <laughs> I mean, I just and I went. That's Scott Sullivan. Yeah. And there's no way it's not Scott yeah, Sullivan. Yeah, just right. by the stance. And it was a black 57 with polished torque yeah. thrust. And that thing just looked evil every six ways from Sunday. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, that's Scott Sullivan. Sure enough, he pulls up with a <laughs> shit-eating grin. Yeah. And and then he opened the hood and he had that um, super palm, palm trees on acid. Yep. Is on, what he on, called on the, the super what he called the What he called the airbrushing. <laughs> and the motor's like this nice. crazy colors. And, and, and it, was, it had some turquoise in it because the interior was turquoise. Well, the, yeah, he had that yeah. doily interior, the yeah. factory, in, totally yeah. stone stock, except for like 22 speakers hidden all over oh, the place. Yeah. That was He's, a... 
That was a crazy car. Subtle. Yes. But it's not subtle. Mm-hmm. It's in your face, yeah, yeah, but subtle and all his tasteful stuff. So, I, yep. I definitely really enjoyed that style. Yep, yep. Well, it's like when I was in college, I had a, a writing instructor that said, "Kill your babies," and I never understood what that meant. But in the car world, writing, write, writing instructor, where he would say, if, "If if you come up with this great line, mm-hmm. it overpowers the story." Sure. And then, and then all people remember is your is your line, but not the meat of what your story is. So kill your babies, and that two percent, that subtleness is exactly that. Sure. It's, I'm not going to overstate this because yeah. because it doesn't need <clears throat> everything's <clears throat> for the car, everything's yes. for the program, yes. everything's for the the whole design that he wants you to get when it comes in. Mm-hmm. And I tell. Younger guys have have a lot of guys that come up and they're like, oh, you design? I'm like, oh, whatever I do. But um, I, I I try to tell them that it's, it's, it's all about the whole package and your details make the whole package, not stand. It's the same with cooking. All, you, you shouldn't taste that spice. It should be part of the thing. Right. And uh, so it's under, almost like you're searching for it. You can yeah, taste oh, it, but you're under, not sure under, what it is. Under, understanding that is a is a <laughs> real big deal. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> aforementioned <laughs> tacos. I'm good. Um, Somebody's gonna wear those. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 and and that thing's big to me. That that whole, like I said, yeah. that whole two percent. Yeah. Uh, understanding that it's part of the program, and for me, Sutton, I, I think I got aware of when I would look at stuff you guys would print or when I would see something like Sullivan's car come, ar- come around that corner mm-hmm. um, for this particular weirdo world of cars and hot rods and street mm-hmm. machines. Sure. Where, where you can do anything you want. Well, right. But it's evoking emotion. Yeah. When I, I'm, I'm, sounds goofy, but I mean, sure. and you guys know what I'm oh, talking yeah. about. Oh, when absolutely. I saw Sullivan's car come around that corner, I, I like, went, oh. Whoa. Yeah, sure. You know, it, it was, I literally, I remember I, yeah. I went out loud. I went, whoa. You know, I just, and, it was just like a shark coming around the corner. I'm like, oh, that thing's awesome. And, and everybody gets, gets geeked in a different way. Mm-hmm. I could, I was building the, that, that four and 20 inch motor. I, I bought the parts to, no, I'm sorry. It was a five, it was a five liter I did for, for hot rod. Right. And I got a rotating assembly from Crower. So it was the it was this beautiful crank and these fantastic rods and these pistons and all laid down the bench you know and my first wife came over to visit the shop you know it was probably brought the kids to let's let's go to lunch you know and I'm I'm geeking out right <laughs> showing her all these parts and she looked at me and went this is what gets you excited you know and it's like yeah it's cool as hell you know yeah exactly I know you don't understand this but I don't want to build the motor I want to just put this stuff under glass yeah that T seventy or the Lola. <clears throat> what he's referring to so is in my awesome. booth here at the what Grand National. What is that National. doing in your booth? Yeah. What is that doing? Why is it here? Why, is why it? are we here? <laughs> to blow up basketballs. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's oh, that's Bill old Cosby uh, Bill Cosby. Cosby. Yeah, that's right. Cosby I, to inflate no basketballs and footballs. I like that. I like that. <laughs> uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, also a customer, his name is Steve Sennett, and he has a wonderful collection of vintage race cars. And in that collection, he has the... I have this correct. The winningest Lola T70 Mark III Coupe in right. history. It is so the Bonaire so we'll car. We'll have to do a picture. You know? Yeah. 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 So well, I'll, see I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the picture yeah. to get. It's actually, if I have to, I'll take a picture and send you the picture. Yes. Uh, it's, I've, I've known of this car long before I met him. He's on the cover of one of my sports car books, and that car has all four wheels off the ground at Nuremberg. Oh, I, and yeah. it was it was raced by Bonaire. He got it from... Um, Lola in 1969. It's one of the original 16, uh, and it won all over the world where it yeah. was raced. This is a Mark III, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Coupe. With, a, with a small block Chevy in it. Small block yeah. uh, 305. Even though uh, Steve told me from uh, I think once or twice in its life that it actually had a big block in it when the class allowed. Oof, oof yeah, man. Because it probably weighs what? Maybe 1,700 pounds. It's 1,600. 1,600 pounds with, let's 16, say... Right about 500 horsepower, and five, everyone yeah. in today's day, they're like, that can't be fat. I'm telling you right now, oh, you'll pee yourself. Oh, yeah. you'll, you'll apply throttle yourself. on that car. So then imagine, put a big block behind it where yeah. 500 happens at like 
mm, 3,000 yeah. RPM. It's, it's, it's con- <laughs> I think the term would and be concerning. Yes, yes. So yeah. he, he also has an original uh, Bruce McLaren-driven McLaren Can-Am nice. car nice. with the, um, um, not Alcola, um, who, Reynolds. Reynolds. Okay. Re- Re- aluminum Reynolds big aluminum block. Inch, sure. big block, yeah. Um, yeah. What's the monocoque body? What's so that that's why there? it's here. Okay. Because um, there's a tub next to it. Yes, that's he what has I mean, a yeah. he has a tub that is uh, again making sure I say this correctly. The tub was built by the gentleman who was hired by Lola for the continuation program of the of the T seventy. So that is built all but exactly the same way that 1969 one was built in '69. Mm-hmm. Okay. He so has a, a, a bad new, he has a complete new body. Yeah. Uh, it, well, it's not brand new, but right. it's newer than 1969. Yeah. Okay. okay. He has a because complete when it was body. Built on the plans. Right. The body is from the, the molds from Lola. Wow. And he has a complete 1969 suspension wow. and a whole bunch of other stuff that you can't get your hands on. So he's got and all the he pieces to build And he will sell you what we're, we're working together. Um, you will purchase the body, the tub, and the other stuff for X amount. And then. I will be paid Y amount to put it together for you to build the car. And what you get is invaluable because Steve's five miles from my shop. Mm-hmm. So the arguably the world's leading Lola expert will be overseeing. Right there. There's and the car and, can, and any part we don't it, have yeah. that we need to copy, we are allowed to go to his number one wow. and copy the part from it. Sounds like CAD wow. cam. CAD cam. Could be, could be, could be, yeah. could be. But we could, yeah, we could literally take whatever it is we're missing, right. scan, scan it, copy, or if it needs it. to be. The thing is, is though visually, though, if it needs to be made in TIG because it needs to look proper, then it will be then made that's that what you're way. Do. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, yeah. or any aluminum piece that needs to yeah. fill How a plate cool or whatever. Sure, sure. So, um, an amazing opportunity for me. Yeah, uh, no kid. Uh, and the cool thing is, brand new, uh, the the yellow car, and this one you would build. Um, they are completely street legal. They he was are, telling yeah. me they are headlights, because turn FIA, signals, wipers, brake lights, and yeah. that, that car has a license plate on it. Because FIA has, required that in order for yep. you to race. Yeah. Yeah. So um, well, those cars are so and cool. I'll tell you yeah. at the price that you would buy the parts from him and pay me to finish it would be drastically lower than even attempting to purchase oh boy, yeah. The original. Right. Sure. So sure. Due to the fact the original one's not even for sale. No, <laughs> no, no, no doubt. McQueen had one, one of them. So it's McQueen a neat. Had one of those? No, really? Yeah. yeah, Tower used to fix it. But <laughs> your, the funny, your friend Bill Tower. Bill Tower used to fix it all the time, but he said that uh, as per usual with actors and such, they don't pay. <laughs> so one day McQueen shows up and his motor is missing. <laughs> it was nearby. He put it back in. He got a check. And oh, it back so in. it was yeah. kind of a subtle message. Like, like, you know, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that bill that you haven't paid. Uh, yeah, how many times does that happen? That's funny. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure, quite often. Yeah. yeah anyway, uh, so it's a lot of fun having that car. Yeah, yeah. No I kidding. love looking at it. Yes, just staring at it. Just talking about next to talk it. about things that get you excited. That's well, yes. the cool thing is, is yes. for me too. That that is a ludicrous piece of history. Oh, oh yeah, that's Huge. race history. Yeah. It, that's that's dumb history. Those oh. I I go to Monterey like every third year. Go to the historics up there. And the McLaren. He runs that. Does he? Yeah, he drives that. Yeah. Well, wow. there's only one car in the collection he doesn't run, and that's that, the uh, McLaren, because that car yeah. scares him. Really? Well, this car's 16 yeah. with 500 and some horsepower, and the McLaren's like, like 11 seven. or 1,000 pounds, and it's got 1,100. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Jeez, naturally aspirated. That was so, one of the things in, in those guys Ken, were out of their minds. That, Ken Miles' book where they they put an aluminum three ninety in. I can't remember which car it was either a GT forty. I was it was the I forget or maybe it was a Cobra. No, it was a GT forty body, a, a chassis, and they, they took it to Riverside, and he and he, he accelerated out of the pits and just lit the tires up, yeah. and came yeah. back and said this needs a ton of work because it was so much power. Right. Yeah, and and Couldn't probably the, the same same weight because it was all aluminum three ninety engine. Yeah, they they, they yes. can't am stuff. Those guys were out of their, oh, out of their minds. Just crazy. Yeah, yeah. But I got the big loop Neat. sign. I got That's told right. that we got to shut up. So. Really? <laughs> we like, burned through our time already, and I still haven't eaten my tacos. 
it's like running a put, you, put, you know what you do? It was, it was the old routine. Wasn't it Steve Martin who said, you, you put a slice of bologna in each foot and then you feel funny? <laughs> What? That's how he gets his motivation. I don't want to know. I, I, I don't want to know. Wait, That's what? how we're closing out, really? <laughs> so, so do, do what the what talk is. Put those my for. shoes. Yeah. Please don't put those. Please on your don't. Shoes. No, I want to eat them. Yes. Please That's, eat yeah, them. But, but off, off air. Off Please do air. with the hot sauce. Well, well we've had it. way too much fun as usual, yeah, and we're gonna we're bringing in some other. Fun people to talk to here. Yeah, at, we are. We at the, we're at the Grand National people. Roaster Show. We've That's reached my head. There's no more fun people. There's no more fun people. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> we, we burned through all the fun people. We did. We got, no, we got guys from. So, so we, we, we want to thank guys from Appalachia here. <laughs> <laughs> now see here. Are, are there any more funny <laughs> ones? <laughs> Look here. <laughs> I don't even get paid for this. Oh, wait, I do. Uh, okay. I can't, can't okay. Play. Can I get fired? It's enough. <laughs> you're, running out, you're running out of film? <laughs> running out of film. We'll have you talk to HR after. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, first of all, we want to thank our friends at arp-bolts.com. We couldn't do this without them, right? Absolutely couldn't probably do this without not. them. Probably not. No, no. Yeah. So, <laughs> they're funding this whole operation. Yeah, so, um, we, and we've got people clawing at the door to come in to talk to us. Clawing. Clawing. I mean, literally. Okay. Yes, yeah. yes. So, uh, but we want to thank our friends at uh, the Grand National Roaster Show for helping us out here, John Buck. And, and and Kevin Doyle, yeah. especially Kevin Doyle, because I borrowed thank his car you. for a whole week and put like 2,000 miles on it. Thank, thank you, Kevin. Yes. <laughs> so thank, thank you, you very Kevin. Much. Yes. And, uh, you know, we're just going to have some more fun here. You and, bet. Uh, you know, I'm going to take a chill pill so I can I can eat no, my tacos. No, don't do that. Oh, don't do that? Okay. Just all right. Keep all right. going. So thanks for watching. And, uh, you know, click the like button, do all that good stuff. And uh, we'll keep telling you stories.